So we're going to spend about 30 minutes talking about virtual branch. Um, the agenda is going to be, I'm going to give you a very quick overview of what virtual branch is, uh, what's it about, what are the benefits. Uh, we're then going to move into a demonstration that Brian's going to run uh, of, of a portal that we're using to orchestrate a virtual branch environment. And then if we've got time at the end, we'll cover some of the more technical details of the solution. So, what we're seeing in the branch environment today is two potential approaches. One approach is that people are looking to dumb down the devices in the branch and perhaps move the services into the data center. So the device in the branch becomes more s streamlined, it becomes simpler, and then the service moves into the data center. Uh, the alternative approach we see is where people are looking to take the sort of traditional router, the traditional appliance, and actually replace it with an x86 platform and run virtual ser or virtual network appliances uh, in the branch itself. So the service infrastructure doesn't change. It's just simply the way that service infrastructure is provided. What we're going to be talking about today is the bottom one. So basically, virtualization uh, of the branch services using x86 in the branch uh, location. So what is virtual branch? It's about deploying rich services in the branch environment. Uh, and the idea is that we can deploy this environment with zero touch provisioning. So we can place the x86 infrastructure into the branch. It will call home. It will register with the central orchestration system. And the, the benefit of it is that we can put services out there very, very quickly. We don't need to do any form of truck roll to get the appliance to the site. Uh, we don't need any on-site expertise to install the new service. Uh, and we don't need to do any physical rewiring of that environment at all. It's all done logically within the server using uh, virtual switching, uh, et cetera. So what does the architecture look like? So at the bottom of the sort of architectural stack, we need an x86 platform. That x86 platform could be a UCS on an ISR type router. So in other words, we keep the traditional routing function, but we have an x86 platform for additional services, so perhaps firewalling, perhaps uh, WAN acceleration uh, and such like. Uh, another approach is that we have uh, a x86 server out there. It could be just a sort of standard off-the-shelf uh, x86 uh, server. And the last approach is using a platform that is specially designed for the branch environment. So uh, a platform that is designed around uh, the branch sort of setup. Uh, is environmentally friendly or, or environmentally friendly to the branch and has the sort of NIMS that you would associate with a traditional ISR. So a sort of a, a mix between a, a router and, and a server. So that's the bottom layer of the stack. Uh, above that, we have uh, the operating system that actually runs on that x86 infrastructure. That operating system needs to be hardened. We're also putting in a orchestration capability and lifecycle management capability into that operating system. So if the device gets disconnected from the network or anything like that, the device can continue to operate. We can continue to orchestrate and control the equipment or, or the virtual network functions in that office site without the central orchestration capability. The next piece is the actual virtual network function. So these are the uh, virtualized CSR, virtualized ASA, virtualized web services, and, and those types of things. We're looking to support both Cisco uh, virtual network functions. We're looking also to support third-party virtual network functions. The actual operating system and the hypervisor technology we're using is Linux-based, and we're looking to uh, use KVM, a, a KVM hypervisor using LibVirt to actually do the orchestration of, of the VNFs themselves. So that is what lives in the branch environment. And we can 
configure and, and run this environment just with, this piece, uh, with these pieces. However, if we really want to sort of take this into the sort of production environment, we need a central orchestration system that will uh, look after the, this branch VNF infrastructure. So we need an NFV orchestrator, and we potentially also need something to configure the services. And I've shown them as two separate entities. We can do them both together. In other words, we orchestrate the VNFs and we orchestrate the services using a single solution. Or alternatively, we can do them as two separate components. We use the NFV orchestrator to bring up the VNFs and, and such like. We use it to, to put what we call the day zero configuration on. And then that day zero configuration goes off to some other uh, configuration capability. It might be a human being. It might be a controller such as APKM. It might be an NMS system of some form that actually it looks after the service management and the service configuration. So those can be one or, or two separate entities. And then the last piece in the sort of story is the portal infrastructure, which is used to actually control the entire sort of central orchestration environment. So it's used to control, uh, well, the demonstration we're going to show is we're going to use it to control the orchestration of the VNFs and the orchestration of the services. So um, we, we have um, you know, a, a pretty complete solution in terms of, of building the virtual branch and then putting services onto that virtual branch. So with that, I'm going to hand over to Brian, who is going to give us a demonstration of the central portal that we're using uh, to control this uh, environment. All right. So hello. Um, so, the, uh, so I'm Brian, and I'm an experienced designer. So when you see this uh, product uh, that I'm going to show you, what my role is is try to make this as simple as possible for you guys to make sure all of your the customer requirements are built into the portal here. Uh, as Simon was saying, I'm going to run you through three different scenarios. The first is to show you how simple and easy it is to deploy these virtualized services at your branch locations. The second, how to make bulk changes by uh, modifying the policies that uh, are in the templates. And the third is how easy it is to add a site to your network. So today, I'm going to assume the role of a cloud engineer. Uh, when I first log into the portal here, I am presented with, oh, you guys aren't seeing what I'm seeing, are you? Give me one second. Is that up there now? Hold up. One moment. There we are. So now you guys can see my network. So when I first log in, I see a map of my entire network here. And I can see through a color coding uh, if I have any issues on my network, red being critical issues, yellow, and then green being everything is operational. In addition to that, if I prefer, I can also switch over to a table view where I can see a list of all my sites. And I should also be able to do searching on any of the uh, parameters or rich filtering as well. So today, I'm going to drill into the San Diego location here. And once I select the site, beneath that, I can see all the meta information or details about this location. And so when I go to the top here, I see that there is an applied vBranch template. And a vBranch template is a set of services, or virtualized services, that I have running at this location. So I can see that I have the branch office vBranch template applied here. And if I want to modify that, I just click the Edit button. And now I see, over to the left, a list of all of the templates that I'm using throughout my network. 
We'll show this a little bit more detail, but you can see that these may, I may have named to make more sense for my particular network. I select the branch office with advanced security, and I can see that uh, this particular template has site-to-site -site VPN, internet access, and web filtering, and will be deployed in this topology. I can schedule immediately or in the future, uh, maybe during my maintenance period. For you guys, I'll just leave it at immediate. I want to review the changes to make sure that I'm confident of the changes that I'm making to my branch location. I could also email out to maybe my manager before I make these changes to get approval. Once, once I've gotten that approval and I'm ready, I simply click Deploy. And the services start to become provisioned, and you'll see them start to come online. So what I've just shown you is how easy it is with a single click you can actually deploy these virtualized services to your branch office sites. The next thing I'm going to show you now is what happens if I want to modify these uh, templates and change the policies there. So to do that, uh, when I scroll to the top of the page here, I select vBranch templates, and then I go to the template editor here. And this opens up the under the hood uh, vision here. And again, I see that same list of templates. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and choose the Office templates and maybe make some modifications there. So in this view, I can now see all the different settings that I can configure here. So for instance, if I wanted to remove application prioritization from this template, um, but maybe add in here the uh, web filtering, I can see above here how that my topology has changed and my requirements. And I can set the web filtering to uh, any of the default settings here. Um, the other thing to note, too, is with this experience, we're trying to provide the Cisco best practices recommended in here as well, too. So when you're doing these settings, we, we might show you by default what's the best way to configure this, but you guys can modify what you need for your specific network. And of course, I can go in here and maybe make this template make more sense. The other thing to mention here, as Simon was saying earlier, is that this is the service catalog. So we try to provide this to make sense so you can select which services you want here. But realize, sometimes you guys need to provide additional customization that may, might not come with this simple service catalog. So in that case, I should be able to click to man manually configure and I can see, instead of a service catalog now, I'm now presented with a VNF catalog. And this should just be as easy as clicking these different options here and having those show up in the topology. And uh, you can really uh, then go in and customize those additional level. So having made all those changes now, I'm going to uh, submit the changes. And I can see that the services any, uh, any branch now which picks up this template will now have these services running. So now that I have created this template change, I want to show how easy it is to add a new site to your portal. So maybe this is a little bit closer to the first time you experience this, to see how easy it is to get up and running. So I just simply click Add Site here, provide some uh, meaningful names for, uh, for the site here, Cisco Live US. Uh, street address, uh, so we can help map it and make it easier to find in the future. And again, if I'm going to have a local site contact there too, I can also uh, provide that as well as an additional uh, contact information. The next thing I'm presented with is to select, again, the template and services that I want to run at that site. So I'm going to go ahead and select the Office with Security, the same template I just modified from before. And see, that's the same template. And I apply this to this newly created site. And then over here to the left-hand side, I can actually see, based on the template that I selected, the services that I run, what are the minimum server requirements that I need to run, that, uh, run these services. So it should be as easy as once I have the device, put in the serial number. Uh, have that verified. And once this device is plugged in, and I go in here and hit uh, Submit, 
the device is plugged in, it's going to automatically discover this device and start provisioning these new services. So very little effort uh, to start bringing this up. And, and so uh, with that, that ends the uh, portal demonstration. I'm going to hand it back over to Simon. OK, um, so great demonstration. Let's talk a little bit about the technical detail behind uh, the architecture and, and the solution. So what we have running on the branch itself is uh, NFV OS, which is basically a Linux distribution based on uh, Red Hat. Um, we put some hardening capability into the operating systems. We're loading all the drivers and, and such like. Uh, on top of that, we can support uh, Cisco VNF, so CSR, ASA. We can support third-party uh, VNFs as well. And the piece at the top, um, the, the VNF Lifecycle Manager, is the entity that we use uh, to look after that branch. So if that branch gets disconnected from the network, this local Lifecycle Manager will maintain the VMs that are running out there um, but it's also the route by which the central orchestrator actually talks to the branch. So we use uh, NetConf uh, and Yang to talk to the branch uh, orchestrator, and it will, um, <coughs> it will uh, put the necessary configuration on there. It also has a plug-and-play capability within it, so a PMP client, which is what uh, Brian demonstrated a couple of seconds ago, on, on how we actually do the zero touch deployment. Uh, and I'll explain the sort of components of that uh, in a second. The last uh, piece of the sort of top orchestration capability on the branch site is a local portal. So if for any reason the central orchestration device gets disconnected, if we need to go and do some deep uh, sort of analysis of what's going on on the branch, then we can use this local portal to do uh, that analysis um, directly on the branch with or without, the, um, without the, the central orchestration component. In terms of what the central orchestration component looks like, it's based on uh, NCS or NSO from uh, TLF. Um, so it, it is a, a cross-domain orchestration system that uses NetConf and Yang. Um, on top of that, we have uh, the portal front end uh, and the portal back end, which is what de uh, Brian basically demonstrated a few seconds ago. So we have a two-level catalog uh, environment. So the back end, excuse me, the back end holds the, t the V branch template catalog. In other words, how we want to sort of knit services together, and within uh, NCS NSO we hold a VNF catalog, which is how we actually connect the, the, or, or build the virtual uh, network function. And the combination of those two we can use to actually build these vBranch templates that actually reside on the customer premises. So in one mode of operation that Brian mentioned, we basically just spin up, spin down, perform the lifecycle management on the actual branch itself. So if, we, if we're in that mode of operation, then we will literally come down this path here. We'll, we, will, we will interact uh, with the NFV OS component. In the other mode of operation, where we actually want to manage the service uh, on the branch, then we will not only spin up the VNF uh, and, and do the lifecycle management on the VNF, we will actually push the day one, day two configuration onto that VNF such that we have the full service capability there. In other words, we're managing the VNF and, and its life cycle, and we're managing the services and their life cycle. So very quickly, let's have a look at, at how we do zero-touch deployment. We put the box out there. The box has got um, NFV OS on it. It's got the uh, orchestrator, orchestrator function, which we've, we're calling ESC Lite. Um, when the device comes up, the PMP client in the, in the orchestrator 
calls home to a PNP server. The PNP server then goes in to the cross-domain orchestrator and says, hey, I've just seen this serial number. Please register this device. At that point, we set up a netconf connection between the cross-domain orchestrator and the, the, uh, the local orchestrator. And at that point, this device is now online and onboarded to the cross-domain environment, as uh, cross-domain orchestrator. When I want to put down a, uh, a VNF or want to start up a VNF, I register the images. So we put the images down, or, or we, we tell the, the local device what images it needs. It will pull them uh, from a, a, an image library, and then we're in a position to tell the local device that we actually want to deploy the image. So uh, NCS will tell the local orchestrator to deploy that image. Uh, we will spin that image up. We will load a day zero configuration, which is basically a very, very simple configuration to allow connectivity, uh, and at which point the local orchestrator will tell the central orchestrator that the, the service is alive. And at that point, we're in a position where we can make a decision as to whether we push additional configuration, in other words, do the service configuration, or we leave that to something else. So if we're using it to do the service configuration, then we will start pushing config down to the, uh, the virtual machine associated with, let's call it the day one, day two configuration for that device. So that's how we zero touch on board. Uh, in terms of uh, add deletes and changes, what we do is we, the, the user will request a, a new vBranch template. Um, we will, or, or, or the back end of the portal will decide what needs to be done. So it will send a list, list of requests uh, to the, to the cross-domain orchestrator. The cross-domain orchestrator effectively does a diff of what's out there today, what we're requesting, and will request only those things that need to be changed uh, as a consequence of this new vBranch template. So that could be a VNF deletion. It could be uh, deploy a new VNF. Or it could simply be keep the existing VNF and push a new uh, configuration onto the device. But we will only do the absolute minimum that is required to get to this new, let's call it, state. So that concludes. VBranch is about running uh, rich service capabilities in the branch on uh, virtualized or using virtualization technology. It uses zero touch provisioning. And the services can be adapted very, very rapidly, literally within minutes. Uh, there is absolutely no truck roll. There is no on-site expertise. And there is no physical rewiring associated with doing these kind of changes. So that concludes. If you're interested in, in chatting about this more, we've got a booth just over the way there where we can talk about the solution in more detail. We can show uh, other use cases. And, and if you have any comments on the uh, UI, we would love to hear them. So thank you very much. Uh, and uh, well, have a great afternoon. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, Brian.